Yo, what's up guys? Here with another deck profile, and I guess regional uh, report. Um, I went to regional any this past weekend, and I went uh, I went X3 drop. Uh, unfortunate, I know, big shocker. Um, uh, and basically, my rounds, I played against uh, branded uh, two fire decks, two snake eye fire kings, uh, flew, and uh, I played against Dark Worlds, um, and that, that that was it. That was it. Uh, and so basically, what happened was my my fifth round, I played against Flu, and uh, this is on me. I uh, big on me. I went to the wrong table. Um, my table was one twenty nine. I went to one ninety two. I played against a Flu player. I won. Um, but then I was at the wrong table, so I got match loss, and I just took it on the chin. Well, I didn't. I was salty, actually. I was salty, and I just, I just, you know what? I'm gonna drop. Mainly because, uh, uh, I, the reason I dropped was because some, some I'll talk about later in the profile. Um, but yeah, so had a really fun time. You know, just getting to play with, play with the deck more and like really run it through the ringer. I got to see a lot of the issues with the deck. Got to see like where it was strong. Um, and yeah, so we'll just we'll get into the profile real quick. Um, so starting off with starters, we have our three diva. Our three prints and one for one. This is kind of just the obvious lineup. No real questions here. Um, there is definitely clunkiness that you see where you open like, you know, you don't open extenders, but you open multiple diva and princes, and then that can feel like a, a problem. But uh, overall, overall, you know, starter you gotta max them out. Um, next, we play the three dragoons. Still no infantry. Um, never felt like I needed it. Never really came up. Uh, I was you know go back and forth deciding it, but it just. I just didn't need to for this event, and I did not miss it. Um, oh, also, real quick. Hey, guys, listen. I want an ulti Dragoons. Someone hit me up, please, God. Give me a price. Let me buy an ulti Dragoons. I'm, I'm ready to have three. Uh, but, yeah, moving on. Uh, max out in three Mistral. Um, yeah, you know, you need you need, uh, you need to max this out so that way you can even open it with even the dead water or dragoons uh, so you can look at your opponent's hand before your first action so you can hopefully hit the one hand trap that's in their hand if they only have one uh it did also come up where i played against uh fire king snake eye and they had ash niv valor in hand and i just couldn't and there was nothing i could do i couldn't play through i didn't have the extenders um uh, and that that sucked too um but yeah i mean you have to max it out and it's also still good as a body to summon off like in later turns to, to recur waters and yeah, so in a list like this, I'm still maxing out on the minstrels, um, and obviously maxing out dragoons. Next for our sea serpent targets, played one Moulin, one lapis, one duo. This is pretty standard. Um, no questions here. Duo is great, lapis is great, and um, Moulin's good too. You need a Moulin for your end combo if you want to even stand a chance. Um, discarding their cards in their hand. I just uh, played against Flu in uh, uh, game one. I managed to Moulin uh, their thrust and tactics, and it had nothing else uh, into like my board of like. Uh, like like three interruptions uh, and then for consistency we played a uh, three deep sea aria uh, and so I went all over the place and I was testing um, synchro overtake to search diva I but it locks into synchros I was testing uh, small world but the neg one really did hurt um, I was testing uh, uh, I was testing prosperity and prosperity was like the other card I was like really leaning towards um, the only reason I didn't go with prosperity in the end um, was one I did like the synergy one I liked the consistency of you have so many ways to discard waters that Arya is always, was always live um, and then also I noticed that um, it, it was coming up a lot when I was like playing, playing Prosperity where like I wanted to be able to add another like ram to hand off of like Cradle um, but when you have, when you have ran in your field or graveyard, you you can't add another one off of cradle. Uh, there's a restriction there. So I like that Aria. That anytime I had like ram plus Aria, I could discard discard a water, such a ram, uh, make a make a, a level ten synchro, and then I could go Aria banish the ram, and it just kind of gave me some gear, more guaranteed follow up for following turns. Um, and yeah, I liked Aria, and I I liked that three two. Uh, just uh, there there was there was one one hand. Um, again, where I did open like Diva Diva Prince Aria, and that feels pretty bad. And so maybe you could like cut it down to like two and just go for like twelve, you know, uh, twelve consistency cards in terms of like, you know, twelve being your your seven starters, your three dragoons, and then uh, two Aria. Um, yeah, I liked Aria. Uh, next, um, Ice Jades played a uh, three Ran, uh, two Tremora, one Acti, and 
one arginine. So uh, three ran is pretty obvious. You know, it's one of the best cards of the day. It plays really well in the boards. Uh, it's good going first because it triggers your Aria, triggers your Goons. Um, and yeah, so we're obviously maxing out on that. Uh, Tremora, I was going between, you know, one, one, two, and three. Uh, basically, I decided on two uh, just because. Well, so for one, when you when you use the 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 uh, grave red effect um, of of Tremora, you know, to banish it, some some an eye shape from grave, um, that would that would make the the follow up uh, Tremora alive in case I needed a card be, to be able to add auto to be able to add off of cradle, and so I like that. Uh, and then also I did I did want to open this card, um, cause uh, cause uh, Tremora with Prince is like the best combo of the deck. Um, and yeah, I like Tremora. I would, I would play the two again. Uh, and then uh, Acti, so I played, so I actually had cut, I was planning on cutting the rank 4 engine and cutting Acti, um, because it did feel like a brick sometimes, and I almost felt like I would rather this just always be like Manifest or a Tremora in hand, uh, in my, in my opening hands, um, but I think I, I, ba I, I basically chickened out, like, last second, and then I felt like, I felt like I, by, on my follow-up turns, especially, like, with a Manifest, that I was lacking in, like, how far I could push and and like uh, how far I can get my ceiling and so I feel like I want to play Acti for that. Um, in the actual event, um, Acti came up one time where I was able to make, make the rank four play and it was cool, but it probably wasn't necessary. Uh, and this card probably just isn't. I don't. I don't think Acti is needed. I don't think it offers enough to the deck to actually uh, make the slot. And then getting rid of Acti also cuts two spots in the extra deck for more freedom. And then you just play one Arginine. You only need one. Um, I, as I will say, sometimes I, I did I did think about wanting two because you would go you'd use one of your first turn and then when you uh, Donna on a follow up like let's say that you go Baron um, send Baron in the standby phase to summon back Donna um, so I was I was wanting sometimes that I had the second one in deck so I could special it off of Donna um, get the Manifestor Cradle and then sink her off into a Baron straight away before I continue, continue playing and so for that sense uh, maybe the Acti does become a uh, second Arginine. Uh, and then we played our three cradles. Obviously, maxing out for consistency. And I played two manifests. I was playing three for a long time. I even thought about playing one. Honestly, I think I actually, I think I actually maybe prefer one, uh, just because it can be a brick in your hand. Um, it can do nothing uh, when you're going first uh, if they don't hand trap you, especially. And so, and and if you if you're not able to play, then this card is just dead. Um, and that did that did come up uh, one time where I think I opened like three non -in three non engine cards like Tremora and Manifest and I was just like well that's really cool uh, so actually I think I would actually want to bump this down to one because uh, it's searchable I think you actually only need to resolve it one time um, and you're typically not searching it on your first turn and there's other extenders that you want to be able to play with like Tremora and Ran I think over Manifest when you're going first it's not bad at two I definitely would not play it at three um, but I think. I, I, th I think one would probably be what I would play going forward if I was, if I was to continue playing this list. Uh, next we get into non-engine. I played three super poly, uh, three tactics, and three imperm. Um, so the ones I would say, ones I would say uh, would definitely stay is so for one, the imperm. Uh, imperm definitely stays uh, in the main. I, I definitely like this. Being able to have some type of hand trap to stop my opponent from playing was, uh, was nice and in case you can just like, because an, uh, a solid imperm, a well-timed imperm can stop their, can stop your opponent from playing, especially if they're playing like um, like, you know, Thrust, Talents, um, and like Call By, you know, like this is going to dodge all of that. And, and it was also, and it also is very similar to Droplet, uh, and that's kind of what I was comparing it to was Droplet, where, um, you know, they do the same thing that they, they you know, they negate your opponent's monster's effects, um, they negate cards, uh, but... Uh, I like that this was a hand trap, you know, over the, over the droplet, and then also you can still use uh, you can still use it going second when you top deck it for turn. And so I did like infantry. Um, I mean, uh, impermanence. Uh, and so uh, we played three super polys. Uh, this definitely this card would definitely stay. I'd really like a super poly in this list, especially with the low amount of non engine we're playing. Um, so the reason I did do low low amount of non engine was because I wanted to make sure that my deck was going to be able to play throughout the day, and I did break a couple times, um, just just due to the clunkiness of the deck and how how it functions. Um, but I did like, I did, really did like Super Super Poly, uh, came up a bunch, especially like, uh, versus where I, so where I didn't have Droplet, um, this kind of covered the Branded matchup, where, in, uh, my ma match one of the day I played against Branded, and, uh, and they would set up the, the Puppet Lock, and so I was able to go, um, like, draw phase, priority, uh, Super Poly, uh, the, um, the fusion that summons, uh, the Puppet, and I was able to do that, like, twice, actually, against them. And I actually would have, and I didn't, I didn't end up uh, losing that match in time, um, but I 100% would have won if, if we had the time available. Um, I had, I had the availability to, to, 
to, to kill him, but I just didn't have the time to do it. Um, but yeah, so I really, I really did like Super Poly. Um, I only saw it versus Branded. I didn't see it versus the Fire matchups. It would have came in there as well. I noticed that he had a board available to Super Poly. And being able to Super Poly into a Swamp, uh, the, or the Mud Dragon, is just crazy because all of a sudden they can't target any of your waters with, with card effects, so you're just kind of able to play freely. And I really did like that too. Not to mention that it also gives access to like rank four plays uh, if they were to come up, just because the Mud Dragon is there. It's a four, and if you're able to discard your Prince for Dragoons, then you have a rank four, uh, rank four play. And so I did like that. Um, and then, uh, so this is like the only one not in just bought. I wasn't like sure about. Um, I, I was thinking between droplets here. I was thinking between uh, Fenrir's and between talents. Really, the reason I decided on on tactics was because I was thinking that if I open it going first, um, then if I was to get hand trapped in like a diva or something, that the tactics tactics could draw me into you know more more engine or uh, uh, or I could just you know snipe the hand if I, if I already had the engine available. Um, and then I wanted to play going second because I like the idea that I could like take Apollosas um, that were set up that I could uh, I could you know draw to to keep pushing through their board. Um, and yeah, so it seemed like a really good power card going second and going first. Um, I also wanted to be able to play a card that you know worked with the card economy of, of Super Poly. Because you have to discard a card off of Super Poly, and you know, like with Minstrel to look at hand, you, know, you you lose a lot of cards there. And so I thought that, especially going second, um, if I'm Super Poly, discarding a card, and then they go and they use any any one of their monster effects um, that I would have the ta tactics to be able to draw me into more cards to continue playing. Um, and I only saw Talents one time against against Flu, and it didn't even come up because uh, they they didn't have anything to interrupt me with. Um, so I don't know how this card would have been. Um, it, this this could honestly just be it, it could also just be Fenrir because it kind of works the exact same way as Fenrir uh, but it, but Fenrir gives the body on board uh, gives you just card outlet for Super Poly uh, it is a little more sticky and it plays a little better I think uh, going second because just because it requires um, actions from your opponent before you start playing your actual deck um, so maybe Fenrir's actually should have been the slot here uh, but I did I did choose Talents last second and you yeah, don't know I it never came up so if these are Fenrir's or, or Droplets um, wouldn't matter because I didn't see them anyways. Yeah, and so that's a, it should be a 40 card main here. Um, yeah, I was able to get down to 40 in the event, and uh, it did pretty well. Um, it, it did well for for what it is, but I just noticed that it was still missing uh, the ceiling and like the push that I was like really looking for uh, to like close games or to like build a build a board that was big enough. Um, and we'll get and we'll get into how I kind of like how I kind of want to play this deck going forward uh, with that in mind. Uh, but moving on to the extra deck uh, for our waters, we just played a one Zelantis, one Coral. Um, you never need second coral. It does not come up, so we just play one. Um, you play one, and you just you know you bring back Donna, you bring back any of your waters, bring back Arginine, uh, and then you just uh, go up and do a Zealantis to clear a board. Uh, Zealantis never came up in this event. I think um, I think I was pushing for one, and then it, it got interrupted. Uh, but I don't think I actually, I don't think I, I definitely never landed a Zealantis. So um, I mean, this is the boss monster you need. We don't have access code in this deck. Um, it just doesn't really work out, so this is our boss monster to clear boards. Um, and I do like that, at least when you do clear a board with Zealantis, uh, even if it's the only monster in your field and it's, and it's sticking, that uh, you, if, you, if they, you know, they deal with it, you still have like the Tremora, Acti effects in Graveyard to summon back Arginine, um, which we know, which what also was coming up where people were targeting my Arginine all day, they were attacking into it all day, and then I was able to summon back Mirrors, summon back um, other Ice Jades, uh, in waters that I wanted, and so that was really cool. But yeah, so we just played those two, and then for Link Twos, just play Little Knight and uh, Mascarena. I was actually going to cut the Mascarena the last second. Um, I mean, this, Little Knight's an obvious. Um, but yeah, I was going to cut the Mas Mascarena the last second. But I just noticed that there were on my on my weaker boards um, that being able to end on a Mascarena over a Little Knight, so then you could uh, so then you could get both like full value out of Little Knight. Seemed really uh, really nice and really beneficial. Um, so I did. I did decide to play Masquerade in the last second, and um, yeah, Masquerade was nice. Um, it came up. It came up once or twice where I was able to put it on my end board and just being able to have that extra summon because you would go like Masquerade with like a Moonlight Glacier or something, and then you go and do Little Knight, banish a card on summon, and then you'd still have the secondary effect of Little Knight. Um, and so I did like that. Uh, and then I just play Link One, uh, Link Rebo for the Water Manipulation. Next, play the Rank Four Engine um, for for Bahama Toad. Yeah, um, this came up one time. Uh, it probably wasn't even needed. I was winning. I think I was winning anyways. Um, so it, I also did like it. Uh, just based on, another reason I did like it was because I was thinking when going second that if you would be if you go into like a manifest um, act play discard 
discarding uh, prints to uh, go into rank four play, and then you can just send a uh, send the material off of Bahamut, go into Toad, special like, uh, or, and then and then either add Diva or Lapis, and it just gives you like a free um, link uh, like a link climb into into Zealantis. I did like that. Uh, even even with uh, the Zealantis ban. Um, when when Zealantis uses effective banish, that you lose, you're totally awesome. Um, so I would actually, my plan was actually just to use in those scenarios, depending on the game state, I would just use the totally awesome to link off into the Zealantis uh, with the Coral, and whenever Coral comes back, pick Zealantis, and then just get the recursion back with the Toad. Um, but yeah, it just never never really came up. So uh, definitely, the rank four engine is just it's just not needed. It's just it's extra. It's a little one more. Uh, and so yeah, on the synchros, played uh, played the three. Uh, Chinning, Gamir, and Baron, you know, they all come up. They're all great. Uh, Chinning's awesome in this deck, especially like paired with Duo, because if you have, if your opponent has like a banished, like a Prosperity or Extravagance or, or whatever they have built up, and then you have cards banished as well, um, it, I was noticing like my Chinning would just be naturally like 36 or like 36 to 4 to 4,000. Um, and then if you use Duo effect to pump him, up, bump, him up, bump him up again, you know, he would gain double the attack and be able to swing over stuff and banish. And you know, Chinning was great. Uh, Gamir was a good flex spot. It was a, you needed the second water so for your follow up ran. So we played that, and then the one Baron is the obvious. Uh, next for eights, uh, I just played Drag Eye and Excel. I was playing around with a lot of eights here, uh, but because of the rank four engine and super poly, I had to cut down on them a little bit. The main one I was looking at was like uh, White Aura Whale. I really liked that card, um, and I really liked uh, Scarlight. Uh, like Red Dragon Archfiend, something like that, um, mainly because it's a great uh, card that you, you can use to burn in time. So if you start, uh, if you start for main phase one and then go into time and like game three, you can like build up a board or something, or just get one monster on board, use Scarlight to destroy all monsters in the field, and then you'll burn your opponent for 500 for every monster you, you, you'd, uh, you destroy. So you would, you know, you potentially go into Scarlight and with like Lapis and like, uh, Lapis and like Arginine, and then, uh, or you go into like Donna Prince, uh, and then get the scroll like that way, blow up one monster, and then you win in time. Uh, but I did not do that. So yeah, so XL is uh, obvious. You know, it helps you synchro, synchro climb. And then we just played Dragite because we needed one water to play um, in like niche scenarios. Um, the Dragite never, uh, never did come up though. Um, this this level it never comes up. It, it comes up in very, like, very niche scenarios. Kind of like when you're like behind. And Dragite feels a lot worse when you don't have uh, when you don't have Nib in your deck to like send off of it because it gives it additional value. Um, but yeah, just wanted something that I had like a negate. So I played, I picked Dragite and it, it never came up to this event, but but typically it does. And then, you know, big Donna. We love Donna. Uh, Donna was great. Use Donna a lot. That's your main combo piece. And then Super Poly Targets. Just play Gruber and Swap. I didn't feel like I needed anything else. Um, and these both did fine. I, I summoned both of these multiple times. Um, yeah, so these cards were great. Um, and I, did, I really did I really did like the Mud Dragon and, and Garua as well. The, the draw, getting the draw for Garua was nice. And then also if you if you make like Garua and then you go into like Diva and they and they uh, they interrupt with the Diva at all, you can you can just go uh, Garua and with Diva into Excel, go into Baron, get a draw off the Garua. It wasn't bad. Yeah, so that was extra bad. Uh, next in the side, the side was kind of put together last second. I was kind of panicking on it. My only hand trap in here. Uh, was uh, was droll. I this could have been what this honestly should have been was like three bisseals, um, but I didn't have the bisseals on me, and so I wasn't able to play those. I was also think, thinking about veilers for the fire matchup, um, but I really decided that if I was gonna have one hand trap, that I wanted something that was a little bit more turn ending, like especially like for like the scarier decks, I like like <laughs> dark world for instance. I did have droll for the dark world, and that was really nice. Um, and yeah, you know, for like random random scary combo decks, I wanted something that was crazy. And you can even side these in versus like the Fire King Fire matchup uh, because that can like potentially maybe not end their turn, but at least stop them from getting like all the Fire King cards going. Um, and yeah, so we played Droll. Uh, next, we played a uh, one call by uh, one thrust and one harpy. You know, one harpy for the back row removal can be searched off thrust. Uh, thrust was nice. I used it a couple times to search like combo pieces and search uh, board wipes. And then one call by when you go first uh, or second, like into something like fire, or if you have the additional, um, or if, like depending on the matchup, if there's some engine cards you don't, not engine cards you don't need, you put in the call by, like going second. Uh, and then so, and then we play a uh, three dark ruler. Play three dark ruler because there was like random combo decks I was afraid of, and I want to hit with dark ruler. I want to hit with dark ruler, but mainly I want to hit voiceless voice with this card because uh, it basically turns off their whole entire whole entire uh, board of monsters, and you, then you just have to deal with the traps. Uh, next, I played three Cosmics. Put three Cosmics because I wanted to have something that could kind of like just like put me in a really good spot going into like Fire King because you can hit the field spell. Also needed something that when I felt like when I felt like I was going second into boards that potentially might might be playing Floodgates. I wanted something like Cosmics to, to be able to hit the anti spells, hit summon limits, 
And yeah, um, I never actually saw Cosmic, but I did sight in it a few times. And then we just played uh, three evenlies for, I wanted something that was like a good board wipe and something that could like reset the board. Um, and I think I did, I did evenly a branded player and that was pretty cool because they built a pretty big board up and I was able to put them down to one card. Um, and yeah, and so that was a side. Yeah, so this, this was the deck. Uh, and like I said earlier, uh, my biggest issue I noticed with the deck was like being able to push um, and get like a, and have something to like, like really push the deck to another level and like really push like the ceiling high. I just felt like I didn't have that push factor for the deck. Um, and so what ended up happening was the, the round or two before I played against Flu, I, um, I met up with one of, the, one of, one of you guys, uh, shout out to Dex, dude. Dex is the G and he helped me a lot. We spent like, I don't even know, like probably like in between rounds, like, like two, two and a half, maybe three hours, like uh, going over the water deck and, and he was showing me the combos that he was playing. And so what cards he was mainly playing around was the Ib combo, which is just Ib, um, this, the World Chalice Vanilla, and then like the Monster Reborn spell you search. And so basically how, how this works is you would use, if you had like Rand Dragoons, then you could go like Rand's card Dragoons, summon Rand, summon the token, add Diva, um, special Diva, or normal Diva, and if it gets interrupted, it's not as big of a deal because you can use your level three token and uh, Diva to go into Ib because it's a water. And then on summon, it adds a Monster Reborn that this Monster Reborn is any link arrow that uh, it's pointing to. And then when it was sent to the graveyard, it will summon uh, the World Chalice of Vanilla. And so just being able to like, have something that kept giving you um, bodies was really cool. And then one of the like one of the and uh, it was also a tuner, which is awesome too. Uh, and so really, like really, what you could do is you could go is if you had like Ib, and like in like the the Dragoons combo, the Ran Dragoons combo, you would go into Ib with Ran on field. You'd link you'd link off Ib and Ran into. Um, into like a link to like Mascarena, and then you would Monster Reborn, uh, so, so the, the vanilla would get summoned, and then you'd Monster Reborn the, the Synchro back to one of Mascarena's link arrows, and now if they interrupted you at all, um, you could, and, and like it had a card banished, um, or if you had like uh, like Minstrel, or if you had a, uh, or if you had like another a couple cards to go into like Little Knight, so like obviously it's still a little demanding, um, but you could like potentially, especially like going second, you could you could use these cards um, to go into then Donna and then Donna for Prince and then to keep playing from there. And so that seemed really cool. And then what I also liked was that the amount of bodies you're able to build up off the Ib is really cool. So Ib by you know Ib and Ran basically gets you to four bodies on board, allowing you to make like bigger bigger monsters like Apoloza. So even in the worst case scenarios, you just go Mascarena, um, Mascarena with the Ib and Ran special the vanilla from your deck, and then use Monster Reborn. Special back, uh, special back Ib, and then you can link off your Mascarena Ib and, and your World Chalice into Apollos of a three, and it's better than nothing. Um, and yeah, I, so I really did like this, and I'm definitely, and especially in this list, I definitely plan on playing like you know these kind of cards going forward. Um, and like these aren't even like real bricks either, because because one, this is just Monster Reborn to a Link Arrow. So I mean, if you play Link Revo, you know you have you have a you have a slot available. Um, and so this wasn't this this isn't bad to open at all. It's just an extender, and then. Uh, World Chalice as well. This wasn't even bad because you just card off a of water. Um, if you open it, you, you can just card off a of water, um, send to the graveyard, and then when Ib sent to the when Ib is sent to the graveyard, it can summon a World Chalice Vanilla from your deck or from the graveyard. So the body will still come back. And so, so this doesn't even feel that bad either. And yeah, so that's uh, that's the Ib combo. And what else is really cool about it is because they're spellcasters, you're now open to play the Selene line. So what we we're mainly looking at in the extra deck was playing the Selene line. So we were looking at Apoloza because, because like we were saying, you can build into Apoloza uh, really easily with all the bodies you generate. And so that was nice for going first, giving you some additional of the gates. Uh, and then also, um, since you're playing Spellcasters uh, and you play Link Rebo and you have a bunch of level ones in your deck, as long as you have a way to get to like, you know, Diva Prince or anything like that, you know, you, you would link off, uh, link off your Prince for Link Rebo, use two monsters for Dark, Summon any monster from your opponent's field, whether it's a black witch or another, just any any kind of random darks. Darks are everywhere, and then and then um, then yeah, and then you can link three into the Selene, Selene back your vanilla or Ib, and then you can go up into a access code. And so now we have like a way better push, a little more generic, and you know with this engine we were actually with, with these cards added, I really felt like there was no reason to play play a lot of these cards. Like we like. I was happily cutting like, super, super poly targets, although like these aren't bad. Um, just you know, making room for all these cards was a, was a little tough. So we were cutting super poly targets, 
we were cutting uh, XC Engine, and then we were cutting uh, Coral and Zelantis because when you play all these cards, I really didn't feel like Coral was needed at all, and um, and I like that I, my deck was no longer waterlocked in any means because um, that was the only bad thing about Coral is that you get waterlocked. So whenever you make Coral, it kind of feels like well, what's the worst thing you can possibly put up? You can put up like a Chenning, a Gamir, or a Zelantis, and those aren't really stopping your opponent from playing. Uh, and so the best best value that Coral had was able to get like like a rank four play, so you at least had an Omni negate. And um, yeah, so this just kind of gets around that by now having Nopaloza for your negates and having um, access code for being able to uh, end games. And uh, and typically you have you probably have you'd have two pops off the access code through the Selene and Dark. And then if you've already used the Opaloza, then yeah, you have the Opaloza as well because uh, you're because you're not using these cards to make all those in your first turn. So so you're typically gonna have like you know up to three pops with your access code. And yeah, so shout out to Dex, dude. I mean, I really appreciate how much time you spent with me uh, working on this. And um, and yeah, so that that that's the list. Uh, other cards I'm looking at trying out are like uh, uh, I am kind of looking at like Teus and maybe like trying to like play the Mermails in this deck. Not not the Mermails, uh, really just like Teus at you know a two to three count. Um, and I don't even know if I want to play a search target for it yet. Um, you could play a search target like Gun, because um, if you play Gun, then you can play like Nightmare Unicorn and then do. Uh, and then do a play there where you go into Unicorn, um, where, like you you summon Teus, and then you you work your way up to uh, a link three, um, and then you would use Unicorn to, to discard your gun, summon back the Teus, and now you have a, a now you have a, you have your Unicorn and Teus on field to then link it to access code as well. So that's not bad. Um, also Teus is just you know really nice as another another free body on board, another way to get to keep discarding waters to keep putting uh, keep putting pressure on your opponent. Um, and yeah, so. That's kind of where I'm at. Um, I guess just for for ending notes here, uh, I've been I've been working on this on another version of this deck, um, like the since the moment I got home from the regional. Uh, there is a there is a I don't know if it's good or not, but you guys are gonna see uh, Wednesday. I'm taking it to to a locals. I'm gonna test it out. It's a like a, <laughs> there is nothing online for this. This is one this is 100 like a an original list. Uh, using the Atlanteans, Ice Shades, um, the Ib combo cards, and then another uh, a pretty extensive engine. Uh, it's, it's like a 14, 17 card engine or so. Um, and so, but it's pretty exciting. Uh, it seems like it really will really give this deck the push it needs. And there's pretty nice energies there. And I can't wait to show you guys. Uh, it might suck, uh, but in case it doesn't, I'm really excited. Um, and yeah, so that that's about it. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, and yeah, I look forward to showing you guys what kind of spice I am cooking because I got some crazy sauce going on. So yeah, that's it. Uh, later, guys.